Welcome to my virtual campfire. I'm Crystal Kelly. It is times like these that our ancestors would have started telling stories around a campfire, searching for meaning in our existence. We all have our Corona stories to tell. Think of our phone as the warm glow of a virtual campfire. Each week, listen to stories from all over the world about how we as humans fit into the vibrations of mother nature and the universe. Collectively, let's co-create a future through conversation and storytelling and music with love. Hey, Anna Katarina. Hello. (laughs) This is amazing. This is amazing that this works now, you know. I think it will be the craziest podcast I've ever done because I'm in the car. Uh I'm in my car and... um, um, just between Vienna and Salzburg. <laughs> I love but it. it. Works. Um, I know, like, I know we talked a while ago, but talking today is, um, it's. I don't know why, but it's all the things that happened to me just this morning. It's only ten o'clock in the morning my time, and. Um, okay. Even right before I uh, logged in to Zoom, um, I heard a song and it was, yeah, and it was a father son um, singing a song called um, Ocean, something about the ocean. And it, it gave me chills. It was like, it, it was all about water. And I was oh. like, oh my God, what are the chances that I hear this song about water? And it was a beautiful song and it was a beautiful rendition of this young kid and his dad and um, and just really, really powerful. And then I was like, wow, and I'm going to talk about water with Anna Katarina in just minutes. And wow. and it just, I don't know, everything about it just seemed like magic. And um, yeah. I'm just really excited. Well, that's perfect. You know, and I, I'm actually in a very special place because um, I, um, I have been here already two days ago, Oomun Lake, and it's a huge lake. It's, I sent you later maybe some photos, and I had been here two days ago, and um, it is a, a mountain behind it that is called the Dragon Mountain. It's a very, very strong lake. And I have been working with this lake a lot and stayed here for one night, even though it was snowing. It is snowing here like hell. And I thought, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm so close to this magic water right now. Mm. And so I thought, am I prepared? But I think we just go. And I don't know, you, you want to, do you have like questions or you said you changed it a little bit or you know I you I realized yeah I realized that tomorrow um or in I think it's tomorrow is the spring equinox yeah. and and it just the timing of it seemed perfect to talk about healing waters and I want to hear from you about what you plan to do on the next few days and then Monday is world water day And so to me, that resonates a lot um, of this like global awareness of how important water is. And I know the work that you do with water is so important. And so I wanted to hear from somebody on the ground. I mean, you're literally standing at the edge of waters and um, and I want to hear from you what um, the work that you're doing and the difference that that you're making. Yeah. Okay, um, hmm. I would love to share that one. Yes, so we focus on the water. That is so nice, and it's it's my work since at least four years. I'm working with waters. I had been mainly working with the waters up north in Scandinavia, like um, northern Norway, northern Sweden, northern Finland, and uh, with the rivers and the lakes. And there is actually yeah it is a very important part of the world because all these parts up north they um consist or they have all these 
treasures the world is so much, you know, searching for this material world like gold, they have the urine, they have the all these metals that are needed for batteries. Yeah. And so the waters, they are very endangered because they are, there is so much mining and there is so much mining planned for the future. And that is where my work started like almost five years ago at the old mining field where um, the spirit showed me like this old mining field was um, really like the earth had been turned around and at the border of this mining field was a little running water and it was crystal clear and I asked like the Sami there where is it going to and they said oh this water is going down to that lake and there are the best fishes and I thought whoa and you know these poisoned waters from what the remainings of the mining were very close and uh, I found out that they were planning this mining company even to go on mining in this let's say it was like the paradise was across this crystal clear water and yeah the the mining rubbish was left on the other side and so that was the first time i started working doing my work uh, with the special crystals i plant in the earth and uh, they are very strong they are connected to a danish healing group that is working with water and crystals and these crystals protect areas in a large, on a large scale. They were, they have a power to work in up to 100 kilometers each direction, up, down, and each wow. direction. And they built a crystal pyramid in this place to protect that place. So at that time, I started working with those crystals and um, that is one part of the work I do always at Waters and this water group also has been experimenting on water over 30 years in big tanks to make healing water that never gets bad. And they have, yeah, it was secret for many, many years, but now they started opening up because they say the world will need it. And the water is like mm, informed with a different things like mantras frequencies different waters healing waters from all over the world and so i'm working also with that water and i i infuse waters that are like um dirty or poisoned even and this water has the power to bring back joy to the waters and uh, yeah so that i did for years now and then i'm singing for water that is my main job I got from like the my <laughs> my guides upstairs you know I'm I'm guided actually they said sing at every water and in the beginning I did not understand why am I singing there and when I come to a water first it's very calm then I'm singing and then it gets so it gets come so much energy and wind and yeah I in the beginning I could not see what I do and um, now after these years, yeah, I was always fed like spoon by spoon, um, like teaspoons that I'm not like really getting too high on what I'm doing, but they showed me step by step what I'm doing. And sometimes through people who collaborated and they were like able to see what I'm doing. And they said, oh, when you sing, oh, there were these bubbles, these black bubbles coming out of the water. And it was when you sing and you go into the bubble and it, it explodes and it's like green and gold and white colors all over a sudden. And the other thing is I work with the water dragons. They appear when I sing. I didn't know to. I didn't know in the beginning, but then I was lucky to meet people who work also with water dragons worldwide. And... Um, they saw it they said hey when you sing there's a dragon coming and it was so nice so so helpful <laughs> for me <laughs> i love that because i feel like i've been uh called to talk about water which i know is um it's a different it's not the same as singing but um 
it's bringing awareness to to what to things that you're doing to things that people all over the world are doing um i spoke to somebody the other day who's associated with the united nations and their work on keeping clean drinking water in um in big cities you know places like london and mm -hmm. paris and um and i know that water isn't something that is on the forefront of everybody's mind in developed countries you know and um so i think that i'm i'm trying to bridge that that disparity between um the people who don't have clean water and the people who do to make people realize how important this this work is and um and it just uh i love how you say that when you sing by the waters it you know, gets gets all um, uh, crazy and um, and I feel like that is probably purifying the water. Can you explain mm -hmm. that? Mm, yeah, it is more the water. I I understand now better. So nowadays we use words like um, light codes or light language, and that is what I do actually. In the end, I. I sometimes ask, so what my spirits like when I came to a water, what shall I do here? And they said, bring the light into the water. And so by singing and downloading light, I sometimes saw like light coming down or like spirals or like liquid, liquid um, diamond shaped forms. Yeah? So it, it changed in the years yeah, where different things coming into the water, but it is the light language that is working and um, what is very interesting like there had been so much so many people have been doing that the last years I found out through these different Facebook groups huh? mm -hmm. so we have been all working on that and we are now on the next step that is what I feel like this year in January I already got like informations it was very interesting for me to sit down because like it was from Let's say a star connection who said we we give you new informations now right right and so I was writing down and what they said was um, water in the future will all the informations in the future will come through the water all informations for humanity for healing they will come through water and in different forms can be also like essences and so on and yeah and. Uh, what they were emphasizing was like all waters will be new encoded this year. They will be totally new encoded by light language, by symbols, by toning, singing. Um, some people dance, even that is a frequency to, yeah, to move um, energies. And uh, then they said also the, our drinking water. We have to heal our drinking waters, especially in the big cities. It's true. And wherever people think they it's have true. good drinking water, but it is not, it is not alive, the water. And uh, so that is a, a big thing for the future to heal our drinking waters. And uh, I believe the work you do, like I was fascinated to hear about the reservations and to, to bring back clean water. It, my vision was when you were saying it, that I so much hope that there will be people found who feel responsible for the water also in a um in a spiritual way mm -hmm. who say hey i feel i hear the call i maybe have to sing for the water or start even light language or yeah um communicating with the spirits because every water has its own spirit and you can communicate with this water spirit and ask the water spirit what do you need um, what do what can we do for you? We can do that at every water, at every spring or river or lake or ocean, to connect with the water. Um, every everyone has their own way to connect with the water. You find out after some time your own way, um, how you can connect to it deeply. Like often through the heart, you can do like a laying eight through the heart with the water. Um, that you yeah. And even practically take some water on your forehead, on your throat and on your heart, for example. And then go into silence and ask this water, what do you need? What can I do for you? Can I do anything for you? Yeah. And you 
I'm sure immediately we'll get the answer. And, uh, it's amazing because another um, thing that I was that popped into my head just in January is that I'm supposed to listen. And so what you're saying resonates um, very, resonates in my heart with everything that intuitively I've been thinking and hearing. And so um, uh, you mentioned the, um, the work at the Hopi and Navajo tribe and also the Pine Ridge um, reservation. Those, those reservations are, um, you know, I, I believe they hold their people hold wisdoms that we need to be listening to right now and in order for those people to to help us to help mother earth heal um they need to heal and so i think you know helping the waters on those reservations heal in my mind is paramount right now it's i think the the first biggest thing that that we need to do is that um I would love to hear your um, your thoughts about about the reservations. Yes, actually, I believe um, all in all, what we the work we have to do is not to only look at the waters outside because we are water ourselves. That means everything we heal in ourselves, we heal in the outside. I think it's about these her hermetic, hermetic, I don't know how you call them in English, um, laws like, so as much up as down, as inside, so outside. And so it is not only going to, to heal the waters, but I think it is, it is something, you know, that is like a lying aid in the end that what we heal in us, mm -hmm. we heal in the water. So we will tune into the water and the waters at the same time will heal us while we give our part you know it is by connecting to the water with our heart that we are able like to yeah to bring this resonance and this frequency in because each mm -hmm. of us holds a very own frequency and mm -hmm. uh, I remember I once did a wonderful workshop in Helsinki with a guy he's from the from America, Dr. Daniel Ford. He's really doing fantastic ancestral healing work and water healing. And so I met him in Helsinki and he did a water, he was like inviting for a water ceremony. No one knew each other, so we had no idea what is coming. And he did it in such a beautiful, pure and subtle way um, that he was just forming small groups with all the people and was um, telling them, hello, okay, who feels the call to be in a group to communicate with the, with the ancestors of this place here at the ocean where we were standing? Who feels the call to communicate with the fairies and elves? Who feels the call to communicate with the small and little people and stone people, with the trees next group? then with the weather spirits, and then also with the water spirits. And I went into the group with the water spirits. And afterwards we shared, like one of each group was sharing what, what the outcome was or what, what they experienced. And it was really fascinating because for me, um, the, the, it, it was so um, flowing and easy, this whole uh, process, you know, each group got there answers very fast and so in our group the water spirit said to me actually we want to hear your voices we want you all to sing we want to tone we want your voices and we want to hear your personal frequencies and uh, that was so nice because when i shared it we were the last group daniel said oh that's nice because that was the next step, actually. And I didn't know how to, how to start with it with all of you. But now you know what we do next. Because so <laughs> everyone started to tone. Eh? And uh, it was so beautiful. Because you saw and felt the resonance of the, of the ocean. And one thing was very important. It was like, especially in that part of the ocean in Finland, the water is, was quite dirty. There is a special kind of algae. That is like a poisoning or, yeah, poisoning in a way, the water. And uh, 
the water also told us, please look at look at us or look at me, water, as holy, as perfect, even though there might be these mm, dirty parts in it, but please just look as if I'm perfect, 100% perfect. Use that way of looking at me. And that was very beautiful and um, it makes sense yeah, to, um, yeah. I yeah, have I a feeling I, I'm connected to a water group at the moment uh, with 13 women and we have a strong exchange and a strong development in that group. And um, there were some voices saying that at the moment the waters are changing so strongly worldwide they even change, water is changing their color. Yeah, it's color, it's color. Yeah. It is going to aquamarine. There's some kind of different color appearing in the waters. And it is very interesting. These women were all placed into the last years, into places close to waters, to oceans, lakes, or rivers. And they wondered themselves, what am I doing here? <laughs> Why do I live here? So they went every day to work, to be there with the waters, you know. And I believe even without singing, just by being somewhere, you already bring your frequency. And talking about the so-called portals, it's very often we ourselves are the portals. Very mm. often. When That's we come to a place, it is opening because... Hmm, it is like going to, to places, it is like there are small pockets in the earth sometimes from old times and it needs a special person with a special own unique frequency to come and this pocket open and it is released. And mm -hmm. sometimes the work can be done even with a smaller group or bigger group Then it is even stronger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also toning, you can really yeah, open up places and connect very strongly to waters then and places. Mm. I know that um, something that that kind of um, really surprised me was um, a, probably a month ago, I well, every day I walk along the water almost every day um, near my house uh, in Seattle. So we're we're along um, the Puget Sound. And um, and I've done this for years, for like 20 years. I go on my walk and, and it rejuvenates me, it refreshes me. Um, but just in the in recent times, I've been um, walking and and the mantra Om Mane Padme Hum started to pop into my head. And I had heard it somewhere else. And I was going on these walks and I and it would just pop into my head and and I would just over and over, kind of like a broken record. And I didn't really think too much about it it just I was just doing it and then um you know being connected to you you had mentioned that same mantra and associated with water and I was like wow so maybe this is connected to something something bigger you know it it was um maybe an awakening for me where I I realized that maybe this rejuvenating walk that I do isn't just for me, maybe I'm doing it for something, for something else, for something bigger. Um, I don't sure. really know the answer, but it just, it felt uh, like I got chills, you know, I just, I was like, oh, this is, this is really amazing. I, I, and I don't know how to explain it. I, I really don't. I think you have more vocabulary than I do around things like this. Hmm. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I think actually we have to find a new language. There will be a new language for all that, like like especially this light language that is already bringing in so new frequencies. And and it's not about words in explaining. It is more, hmm, how can I say it? It is more like the frequency of what you say. Yeah, that is mm -hmm. bringing the difference or the healing it's not the word and the meaning in the way of the word, how we used to talk in the, let's say, in this old paradigm. Yeah. Um, but it will be another frequency and it maybe will work on a totally different level, everything. And we will yeah. develop a new language. 
an absolutely new language for everything. I believe that. I, and it I will be. Hmm. And I believe it will be a very, yeah, it will be a light language. It will be a healing language. It will be, it will be something totally new in a way. It has been there, I'm sure, in the old days. People start to remember it more and more. And it is connected also, I have to say it, to the stars, to like yes. really different star um, nations and star and stars and planets. Because actually, um, that is not so uh, crazy, but all the water that appeared or came to Earth, or yeah, it was coming with the asteroids. It was mm -hmm. like also drops on these asteroids who <clears throat> banked in the Earth. And so they brought some waters and it is already encoded. There are, there are like elements of the stars in our water. Yeah, there is information from the stars. And... This is like, I call it also the universal waters, you know, mm -hmm. that is uh, like what, what I think what you were feeling like in this higher realms mm -hmm. is also waters. It is universal waters working there. And at the same time, we have um, deep in the earth, there are also big, huge lakes, not mm -hmm. only ab above the earth, huh? but under the earth, in the earth. Huh? And they will have also a very strong meaning. Yeah, that, um, so uh, I, I know that I told you I'm going to Mount Shasta in May, and I mm -hmm. thought I was going to go to the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. And um, it's ironic that you say um, about the asteroid because um, a, a sound healer that I know that lives in Tulum, Mexico, um, which is where the asteroid um, hit, the big asteroid hit that, um, started wow. the ice age mm -hmm. um that's where that's tulum where it hit and she lives there and um and she told me well i know you think you're going to mount shasta to go to the top of the mountain but i think you should talk to a shaman that lives on the mountain that i know and so mm -hmm. she connected mm -hmm. me to that shaman and as it turns out, I'm not going to the top of the mountain. I'm going inside the mountain. And so all of this is now yes. making perfect Woo. sense to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. And uh, this shaman, will he accompany you? Or yes. how is he? Yep. Is yeah, he's a going or a he? He, um, Paul of Venus is his is his name. And he, um, he's taking me to three specific points um, in the mountain that uh, have high energy vortexes. And I'm bringing, um, I'm bringing my drum, I'm bringing my wooden flute, um, some Tibetan singing bowls. And, um, and I'm, I'm planning on making vibrations. And I don't, I don't really know all of what I'm going to do, but, um, but I, I feel, I feel very um, fulfilled when I think about going there. Like it, it makes me feel yeah. really warm and fuzzy. <laughs> oh, I would love to join. I would love to I join. wish you could. <laughs> <laughs> but you will do, I'm sure you will do exactly what is asked for in the right moment there. You know, it, it is born in the moment and they will guide you and yeah. it will be born in that moment by just going there and you, mm. oh, it will be magic. Yes, it will. Sure. It, it really will. I, I feel the magic building and, um, and, and all of these people that I've been talking to uh, on what I'm calling a virtual campfire is we're mostly talking about water, but I think it's perfect because fire and water like you need fire and water and i love yeah. i love how my purpose is is talking about water around a campfire it there's one very important thing i i i was told like a couple of days ago that is very interesting because i had that too with the water and fire in the alchemy of course it's the ultimate if you bring it together in the perfect way it is the ultimate elements to bring together but now we we enter a time that is what I heard, and uh, it resonated with me that we have to connect the water with the earth, water element with the earth. 
And so mm -hmm. you, do, you go in there, that is already like going in the earth. That is, um, there is something happening, yeah. Something yeah. new is coming. I read that um, Mount Shasta is the earth's root chakra. Mm -hmm. um, so a grounding, a grounding um, place. And um, I think there's something to that. I, I think that, yeah. that that grounding and I know um, like the any energy work I've ever done has always been to ground things. And, um, and I just think that when I read that it that Mount Shasta was the Earth's root chakra, it just made perfect sense. It's almost like I could have scripted it or made it up or something, but um, it was just perfect. And I think, you know, when things like that line up, um, it, you know, I, I just have to follow it. I, I can't, I can't not follow these signs. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I would love to come back to the uh, to the last question, which I did not really answer with a, you asked me for the reservations. I, I just get this message now. I shall talk, we shall talk about that again, about awesome. the yeah. water in the reservations. And so I very much hope that wh whether it is porcupine or, or um, wounded knee or um, pine ridge or wherever, you know, that, that it will be possible to find indigenous people from the different tribes who feel the call to work with water. There are some, they doing it, I know for sure, yeah, but to even hmm, bring that forth more, you know, to help, to support the people to do their own water ceremonies in the, in the reservations and Yes, to support it and to invite more people to it, to ask them if they would like to share their knowledge about water and um, about water ceremonies with other people yeah, from mm -hmm. outside. And uh, I have been working with a woman and I would love to connect you with her because she's in Porcupine or close to Wounded Knee. Okay. Uh, Darcy, Darcy Good Crow. And she mm -hmm. felt the call like doing water work in her, I'm um, yeah, in her, uh, for her tribe there. And uh, I think it is very, very important because my feeling is um, there are some still remembering, they are still holding anyway, holding these treasures of knowledge. And there are some who need the healing, you know, um, mm -hmm like uh, let's say like the water in us like we talked about that and so i believe that also the people who had been put into into reservations you know for so many years there is some um, healing needed on the water level you know on on the outside and on the inside of the people you know mm -hmm. and i think this kind of work can bring back the healing for the people and the water yeah it is and the earth and that um, it will be like you know, they will. It will be a collaboration of all of them, yeah. And they will heal, and the water will heal, and in vice versa. Yes, I believe. Mm -hmm. It feels like a um, a simultaneous yet like multifaceted um, thing that uh, that can happen all at once. Um, I think sometimes people think healing has to take a long time. And I believe that that it doesn't. I think that you mm -hmm. can um, you can just have the right intention and and uh, i've I've experienced um just even personally, I've experienced um, like uh, healing that was spontaneous and and I had pain and it literally went away spontaneously in a moment of, of, uh, I don't know if you call it a realization or, or whatever it was, but in my heart, it just happened. And, um, and it felt very real. And so I like to think that that can happen um, to, to people, to, to our planet, to, um, to the water. Uh, I, I'm, I'm also an eternal optimist. <laughs> Yes, I believe so too. I believe so too, that healing 
usually healing can be very fast, light, and easy. It can, it can be very fast. It does not have to take long or be heavy. It can be very mm -hmm. fastly done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or taking place. If, if you're connected, you know, to the higher realms and, and of course, a, a pure heart and intention, clear intention, then can be very fast. Yeah, if they I do think it through us, they do it through us. If we open that channel to say, hey, I'm here, I serve. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm serving, yeah. I'm here to serve, then it goes through it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really it's amazing. And I, I do think a lot of it comes from intention with you know having that real clear, like what what do you why are you doing this? You know, why what is the purpose of this action or, you know, singing or, or whatever it is that, that you're doing. I think, I think intention is, is really, um, is a powerful thing. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Yeah. The, the clear and pure heart to it. And mm, yeah. And, th and then when we can connect, you know, both, uh, with a conversation, but also, um, with a higher consciousness and and all um people all over the world i believe right now are connecting on that level with the same intentions and you know we might not all use the same languages but we have the same intention and and i think a lot of of that is um to heal and um and maybe it all does start with the water because we are mostly water, you know, it, it seems really obvious that maybe that is what it starts with, but, um, you know, it, that's just, that's just my thought about it. <laughs> mm, yes, it is. But it is so. And we are more than 80%. We consist of water. And I work also with the Tibetan singing bowls. I did that like, yeah, long time ago in education. And that was my coming into under deeper into understanding how how the water in our cells is working and how much we can invite something in our like the water in our body if there is like a disharmony in somewhere in parts of the body with a singing bowl to it's a, like a, an invitation to turn into something harmonic again and uh, mm. And it works so well. Yeah, it works so well. And the same is um, with the one. We know like there is already quite a lot of knowledge about water these days. You know, water has memory and it is so fascinating. And nevertheless, I think we are like really in the beginning of understanding <laughs> what water is and what it means. And it is a crystalline form and it is it carries so much information and there was like a research I was so fascinated by. It's quite a new research on water, like in little running waters in nature, passing by flowers and they researched the water and they even saw the color of the flowers reflecting in, in the water drops, you know, they take over just wherever they flow you know they they um take it in and so same with our voices same with our frequency i realized that water remembers me you know mm -hmm. places i have been singing and i come back after years to this place after feeling the water remembers me when i sing and it is as if this frequency is in it and they they remember me the spirits it is very I, it is very fascinating mm. very beautiful that, it is um that reminds me of a um i watched a documentary um and i believe it was water on the hopi reservation that um this artist she um she took these um these papers that took um if you put them in a dark room, they would make they'd make a, a pitcher. So she would dip the paper in clean water in a clean stream, and then um, and then she would dip it into the dirty water um, that that was poisoned with arsenic and and all these things. And then she would take it to her dark room and develop these pitchers. 
And, um, and she did, she didn't exhibit um, in New Mexico on this. And, and she had these beautiful images of, of like reflections that the clean water would do. And then the dirty water, the images were, um, there was no pattern there. It was not even all of it printed. It was just like, like almost like you would take a crumpled up piece of paper and kind of like smash it. You know, it was very like not pleasing to the eye. And I, it was, it was such a visual representation of like, wow, this is what clean water looks like. And this is what dirty water looks like. And that's just sad, you know, like it, it looked icky and um it didn't look like art you know it looked like why is this on the wall you know it was but that juxtaposition and that visual representation um really hit home to me about about what dirty or poisoned water is I mean I don't want that in my body I, I don't think anybody does mm -hmm. yeah absolutely but the same is our, like we had, we came to that point with our drinking water. It looks clean or, yeah, but there are so many, yeah, chemicals in it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the proceeding or even where it is coming from and all these um, tubes and where it is passing through and all that, you know, I think, oh, yeah. We have to work a lot on that. And yeah. the best thing is really to find a spring and to drink each day clean spring water. It carries information from inside the earth. And it is, yeah, it is the purest and most precious we can have. And uh, to have a spring somewhere close and even to encourage people, you know, to go searching in the mm -hmm. area. And uh, asking for, hey, do you know, is there a spring? And if you have one, then to take care of it, to clean mm -hmm. it, to keep it clean and on different levels, you know, like keeping it clean from rubbish, but also um, in a spiritual sense, like connecting again the, the, yeah, the nature spirits with the water and with this place. Yeah? And we come to that work now very much in the future. In the very close future, um, I had I just had an interview with a, like I think it was four or five days ago with Marko Pugacnik. He is from Slovenia, and he is doing earth acupuncture, and he is like over thirty years working with the beings, all kind of beings in nature, and he can talk to he talks to them, he sees them, and he collaborates with them. And um, he just recently said, wow, it was very interesting. Um, we were talking about places, like strong places and how to connect to these places and to the fairies, elves, elves, to the tree spirits and so on. And he was like um, so saying a lot about that, that these places, when we come there with a group, we have to be like very patient first because they are not used some in some places anymore or they lost almost their trust in the people and this has to be brought back you know and it takes some time to in a way awaken them and to start to collaborate with them because they will be helpful now in the future helping to mm -hmm to raise the frequency and to help um, restore places and uh, they will be brought back into places where it is needed and he was especially talking about elves and fairies mm -hmm. and trees that was interesting because he said the fairies and elves they keep it each tree has its own fairies and elves that keep him alive because just they focus on this tree and that is um helping this tree to grow and to feel good and to to be yeah to to grow during my conversation with Anna Katarina she lost her internet so we weren't able to finish the full conversation but when i connected with her again she sang a lovely song with her shruti box and that is how I decide to share 
the end of my conversation with Anna Katarina. From inside box. <laughs> it was beautiful. That was, that was, um, it, it was really amazing. And what I had said is I hope that, um, I know you're in a really remote place and, and that the, um, I hope that the internet didn't cut out any of your song because I want to, I just hope everybody can hear it. Thank you for doing your job you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. It's, um, it's bringing me really, uh, really great pleasure. And, um, and I feel, I just, I, I feel like, um, I hope it's helping. That's what I hope. I'm sure. I'm sure. And you do it in just a shiny way, you know, it's so vital and so vibrating. It is so nice, you know, that already, you know, will, you know, that's these ripples you know because there's so much joy in doing what what you're doing you know mm. it's it's true when you really truly enjoy what you're doing it's um it's it can be in a, a really uh contagious hopefully in a good way for the closing it was that there was one sentence that was also said like from above it was like um about these new waters and the encoding of the waters for the future and it was said um we will bring back the joy to the waters because yeah we the yeah. people will change the people will transform the people will wake up and we will bring back the joy to the waters mm -hmm. yeah and i think i think that we'll bring back the joy to the people too because you know we should be singing and dancing and um mm -hmm. and enjoying life because why else are we here you know, yes. we, mm -hmm. we should um, enjoy our days for sure. Yes. Yeah. I'm looking Thanks. forward to what you do there in the, in the reservations. I hope I hear more about it. Yes. And, yes. and I would love really to send you like a contact to um, Darcy again, maybe yes, Darcy please. will crawl. just, yeah. I mm -hmm. would love that. And I will, I will connect with her. And, um, and I think that uh, will, I, I'm hoping that by the end of the year, we have a beautiful celebration to do on the Hopi reservation uh, that involves music and dance and um, just a true celebration of life. Um, I'm hopeful for that. And, uh, and you know, and in the meantime, I'll go to Mount Shasta okay. and keep connecting mm -hmm. to people and keep talking about clean water and, um, and I think it, it is, it's beautiful. Thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. You're just doing amazing work and, um, and it's, it's really exciting to hear about it. Yeah. Thank you. Each one, each of us holds a piece for the whole puzzle. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's a beautiful way to end this conversation. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Thank you. You too. Have a great day. Stay warm. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. 
If you like what I'm creating here on my virtual campfire, please subscribe and give me five-star reviews so that I know these conversations are worthwhile to others. I love doing this and I hope you love listening. Thank you. Thank you for listening to my virtual campfire. I'm humbled and grateful and with heartfelt thanks Thank you for listening all the way to the end. Um, I hope that it caused a vibration or a thought or sparked something inside of you to make a positive change.